Hello. Just uh, checking out, uh, trying to use a, a tripod here and do some uh, after action uh, videos. It's not going to be anything super duper fancy, but um, basically I'm trying out line of battle. Uh, you guys are looking at it upside down because I'm sitting on this side right here. Got my handy dandy little uh, tweezers with a light on it. <laughs> Seems like overkill. Um, I had actually played this already one turn, but I was shooting from this angle and then my big hand kept getting in the way because I'm so used to doing everything on Vassal. So I needed to do a test run on here and um, I figured if I put the camera on that side and just did stuff here, you'd be able to see good enough and we'll see how that goes. So what I'm going to do is, uh, this one's only four turns, this is Dogs of War, this is the introduction to... Uh, Last Chance for Victory, Line of Battle. Um, I'm going to play this as an introductory one. I got this as a birthday gift this year from a friend of mine um, who, who plays Vassal with me. But uh, he loves playing on the tabletop. And so in the spirit of that, I wanted to play it on the tabletop for him. And also try something a little different. Um, I do miss moving the counters. I, I do like Vassal. There's a lot of things with Vassal I like. For example, when you move something, it puts a little move marker by it. Uh, it's easier to look at stacks. It's easier to move all the pieces and look at terrain. All that good stuff. But there's something about moving the pieces that I still enjoy a lot. And um, I probably won't as I play some of the bigger scenarios. I would like to. I just don't have the space right now. But when or if we get the basement project done, I will have some room down there. And I'd like to do some counter stuff because I do miss that. So... Uh, I'm going to do uh, the Confederates move first, and um, you don't have to worry about any orders, and there's no uh, fluke stoppage because you ignore that for the first eight turns in any scenario, and this one only has four, but uh, Barksdale and uh, Wolford's Brigades are attacking with uh, McClaw's Division. <coughs> Barksdale has orders to attack basically north of this road right here, the Millertown Pike. Uh, he has to attack on the north side of that and exit off here. And Wolford is to support his attack and attack south of the Peter Trossel Farm Road. So he can't go up into like here. He basically is going to be what tries to pin the Union left. The Union's job is just to stop him. Now when you play this as two different people, it's pretty short. Um, you don't have to do much with command phase really at all. Um, you will have to base, basically is going to teach you movement, line of sight, uh, fire combat, uh, melee combat, and how to close, uh, to make closing rolls, stuff like that. So, um, I'm just going to do like one confederate turn, one union, uh, one confederate turn, record it, one union turn, record it, and just give you the end results. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, this is something new for me. Usually I do Vassal. I usually do where you can see what I'm doing and everything. Uh, but I don't have that much room on my phone, I don't think. And I'm using my phone. Down the road maybe someday I can do that. Uh, just not right now. I don't have enough equipment. I got a couple of kind of lame tripods and my phone. So we'll just go with that. We'll see how that works. And you guys can give me feedback, and then those of you guys that use tripods and record live play on the table, I will definitely be picking your brains down the road probably to get some information from you. And we'll go from there. So looking forward to it. And uh, once in a while I might do some stuff where I zoom around here a little bit, get a little bit closer. I'm not sure of the glare. You know, I'm just doing this on the kitchen table. So nothing super fancy. But there's the look. And like I said, I'll probably just do it from this side over here because then it'll be consistent. And I think that's a decent, decent picture. I mean, you guys will have to let me know. I'll have to watch it too. We'll watch this, see what it looks like. See if it looks okay. If some of the pieces start off the board in partial hexes, so it is what it is. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll just tag the other videos on the end of this, so it'll, there'll be a little break there, and it'll just go to the Union turn, Confederate turn, and then I'll start a complete new video. So each one of these playthrough videos probably be, oh, 
without this introduction one, they're probably going to be like four to six minutes, maybe eight at most. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit here. And I'll go through what I did this turn. Uh, try to show a little more of the screen there. Okay, so the Confederate turn is done. They had the opening turn. Uh, kind of give you just a little bit of a rundown of what happened. Uh, there's some artillery fire here on this artillery that was sitting here by the, the Union artillery, and it uh, it suffered a loss and had to retreat one on the morale check. And when it stopped here, you could make the whole stack shaken because it was shaken. Or it says artillery can continue. You can retreat um, the unit up to 12 hexes back, but then it drops a second level. So shaken went to dis disor disorganized or disorder disorganized, I think it is. And I thought that was better because otherwise these guys would all be shaken. And as the Union player, none of these guys had moved up yet, so I didn't want to risk getting closed with and then getting attacked in shaken order. So I thought that was better, and I think overall it was. Uh, this Union uh, unit here, this is the... Who is this? This is the 63rd Pennsylvania. Uh, they suffered a hit and uh, fell back shaken on their morale check. Uh, there's some artillery fire here that was ineffective and artillery fire here that was ineffective. Uh, uh, Barksdale's brigade did its job. It's trying to get off over here, remember. Uh, I didn't have that on the last video very clear. Uh, but they're trying to get over to here. So they've moved up here. Now there's a little crest line here that blocks the line of sight of everyone behind it because this is one level higher than the terrain, right? So if they're not on it, they're not on that hex with the crest line, uh, they can't be seen. Now if this guy was like here, for example, you'd be able to see him because he'd be they're considered on the highest terrain in the hex, so he'd be considered here. Uh, then the rest of Barks, or, uh, Wolford's brigade came up, and uh, we got a lot of leaders here. I didn't, I should have probably used Wolford over here, but later after I'd moved him up there, I decided to move the 18th Georgia. They were able to make their closing roll to here, and they failed their final closing roll because I figured a 6-6, six to six, and they have a B morale and a D morale. I oh, and I forgot to do this. So I'm just learning this. This would not have affected anything as there was no other morale checks. But when a unit other than artillery, the artillery re retreating here did not leave a cowardly legs. That doesn't happen. But when this guy fell back, you have to put the coward cowardly legs marker. So I would have put that there. That wouldn't have affected any of this, but I was trying to get here and they failed their close roll. So I had a couple great artillery shots that did some damage. Um, I think each strength point is 50 in this game. So we got about 100 casualties with uh, people uh, getting wounded, killed, and also stragglers. Because the stragglers are included in the morale rolls when they start uh, dropping back and stuff too. So uh, that's it. So hopefully this looks okay. Again, I'll have to go back and watch and I'll have to figure things out with lighting and whatnot. The artillery will sit back here. Um, this guy can direct more than one shot into a hex, but I chose to spread it out. I was hoping to cause some line issues. And then we ran the 16th Georgia up here, and I didn't want to close. The other thing is any of these guys that would have been able to see had already moved more than, uh, I think it's three movement points, half. You can't fire. So I couldn't fire, and I thought about sitting back here and firing, but one thing I'm learning by watching some videos on this game is if you sit back and do long-range fire, uh, you don't get much for results, and especially with artillery, you're just going to risk running out of ammo uh, and not have really great results. So I tried to use my artillery where I could, where it was uh, five hexes or less, because there's no modifier, no shift. So it went pretty well. I think the risk-reward of backing off this artillery and not having... I have two regiments here that retreated through the 57th Pennsylvania and the 114th, and like I said, according to what I understand in the rules, and I'm bringing up some rules in case I'm doing them wrong, so if, if you play this game and you watch this, let me know. But when it retreated, it had to go one, and I can stop there, but then it was shaken, so the whole stack is shaken. No cowardly leg goes there because it was artillery, so it limbered up and moved one. And then the rules say you can retreat 
up to 12 steps to continue past the unit. I know with artillery you can do that. I don't know if that's everybody, but for sure artillery. And then the, the morale of the artillery would drop one more level, so it went to disorganized. So when, you come, when I come back, we'll see what the uh, Union does. I think we'll try to flip this around. I think this is the Excelsior Brigade. I could be wrong there. I'm just taking a wild stab at that. Uh, see if they can flip around there by the Daniel Kling Farm. Klingel Farm. And see if we can stop this up. And then we're just going to try to hold. So, because there's only four turns, so the pressure's on the Confederacy to get off the board. I'm mostly just excited to do some moving and learn the sh uh, shooting and melee rules and closing rules and remembering to put cowardly, cowardly legs down and all that. So, we'll continue on when we get back. Thanks for joining. And uh, we'll get the Union move done here and go from there. Hey, welcome back. Just getting my zoom figured out here using the phone. And uh, I want to go over this turn. Interesting turn. Um, well, not, not that interesting, but did some stuff here. Uh, so this was the Union turn. The Excelsior Brigade shot around here basically and is hiding behind this ridge. Uh, that's going to make Barksdale have to come up and approach them, which will either, you know, if Barksdale moves up and fires, they get to do, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like an opportunity fire, uh, volley, first volley. So um, if you move and fire at somebody, they get a first volley at you. Uh, or if you try to uh, charge them, they get first volley. So, um these guys are sitting behind here thinking, well, if you come over that crest, um, you can't just shoot at us where you're at, which that wouldn't probably be very effective in this game is what I'm thinking. Because uh, basically after the first hex, it's a shift for every hex to the left uh, up to the four, I think, roughly. So it gets pretty rough to try to do any kind of damage from distance. So they're going to hide behind that ridge, and then I put this uh, little crummy guy here with a D morale. He's going to be the reserve for them. Not an actual reserve, but in the game rules, because you can have reserves in the game, but he's he's just basically a backup. Uh, the artillery dropped a shaken that was disorganized here. These guys are able to rally. Um, this artillery is mounting up, getting over here, getting ready to defend this area. Now, being a short game... Uh, I probably wouldn't normally put sickles up here with third core, but um, we're just pretending with the short game and, and the objective that this is a desperate moment, so he's been thrown into the, the battle. Uh, we'll see if that's bad or not. Um, we were able to close uh, here with the 141st Pennsylvania, but I didn't want to fire because I didn't want to give them volley fire, but then following that turn, uh, after I moved up, I should have fired first with the 68th Pennsylvania, because they actually smacked these guys for uh, two hits, but they held on their morale with a B, so they took a pretty good beating. Uh, I ran uh, Burling over here with a... Uh, 7th New Jersey Regiment um, and then these guys had fired on the 16th Georgia to no effect nothing happened I think it was a morale check and they just held uh, but now we got two guys that can start ganging up on them and uh, we're gonna see if the Union can maybe try to cause some problems here on Wolford's flank because I bolstered Wolford here and I you know thought I'd swing around here um, got some, so these guys had to rally this turn, and they've already taken a hit, so they're down. Uh, these guys started out uh, up front, but they're only a three. Um, so i using them as kind of reserve in case there's a breakthrough, and then same with here. If we get any kind of a breakthrough or a push, we can flood through there and maybe go capture some guns. So that's going to be the end of the 6 o'clock turn. Uh... Maybe later on today or tonight if I get a chance. Um, I'm just kind of doing this over a lunch break here. Uh, it's pretty cool, this little game here. If you were, you know, if you had an hour lunch, uh, even a half hour lunch, and you knew the rules, you could bang through this little scenario pretty quick. It's pretty much just fire movement. 
a uh, little bit in the rally phase there's really no command stuff there's no attack recoveries or fluke stoppages or orders to give so it goes really quick um, now I am really excited to get into the meat of the game which is the orders phase so I'm not really getting any of that in here just so you know if you play this this will not give you the actual feel of the game per se because the I think the meat and potatoes in this system by my reading it and I haven't played it a lot so I can't tell you this but my gut feeling is that the meat and potatoes of this is the chaos of giving orders and them orders being delayed and these guys not receiving the order correctly and delaying and then instead of your attack going off in coordination it's uncoordinated or or one of these guys jacks around for an hour and doesn't do something and uh, that's going to be really fun. I'm really kind of excited for that. Um, I think the game overall, like I'm a big Great Battles, the American Civil War guy. I love that system. Um, that's a lot more crunchy on the combat. Um, like the charts and everything. Like this one, I feel like I'm, le I'm forgetting stuff, but there's just not a lot of modifiers and stuff. And it's pretty simplistic on the combat, which that's fine. That's not a criticism. I'm just saying... You know, to me, the complexity in this game will be learning how to coordinate a big attack on a map like Gettysburg or Antietam or something. Uh, getting everybody to, to do stuff at the right time and, and dealing with guys like Brewster here that's a 0-0 who's going to be a really sucky leader when it comes to giving orders and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to do that. Um, I do have a plan for that. i got a couple guys lined up. I want to play solo, but I'm going to have each of them play the overall commander and just give me written orders, and then I will play out the turn. Uh, I'm going to use Vassal for that just because I don't have the space, but um, I'm pretty excited about that, and I think that would be a, a great way to play it solo is to have you know two overall commanders, one Robert E. Lee and one George Meade in this case, and they will give me the orders, and I will execute the orders for both sides the best of my ability, but they won't know what all the orders are of the other side. So you get a little bit more fog of war that way, and i got a couple friends that said they do that, and then I just give them an, an after-action report, kind of like this, showing them the positions on the map, and they can look at casualties and, and stuff like that, and they'll have to assess the map on their own. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. Anyway, that's a little longer than I planned. I kind of started rambling about some other stuff, but thanks for watching. And uh, I'll get this first series of videos put up. It's just basically the intro, the Confederate and the Union. And then the next turn it'll just be Confederate Union. And then the next video, Confederate Union, Confederate Union. So uh, they should go pretty quick. So we're getting ready for the 6.15 p.m. turn when we come back. Thanks for joining me.